Good morning from Myanmar. This is my first morning here in this new country, and last night I slept long and hard. I really needed it too. I was so tired. I think the air conditioning here helped a lot, being cool and dry for the first time in what feels like forever was really nice, and I slept uh, much better. This hostel I'm staying at, the Little Yangdon Hostel, uh, serves a breakfast down in the lobby area each morning from 7 to 10 or something like that. And I don't usually uh, have a breakfast even when they supply it. I'm generally too busy in the morning and I want to get up and start going, you know. It's probably not a good habit, but today I'm going to head down and see what breakfast looks like. I'm actually a little bit hungry, so it's nice that they have some food down there. Let's go check it out. Here is the breakfast buffet. Got some fruit and vegetables, bread, rice, orange juice, and a toaster to toast your bread and some jam. And I think I smell uh, coffee somewhere, so we'll have to track that down as well. And there's my breakfast. Got some watermelon, some tomatoes, cucumber, rice, and for the first time in months, maybe a year, I can't remember the last time I had toast, buttered toast. So a traditional, semi-traditional kind of Western breakfast with uh, orange juice. So this ought to be good. There's the sign for the Little Yangon Hostel. As I pointed out the other day, they've got New Year decorations at the front here. Very nice. And they have two buildings. This seems to be the main building for rooms over there. And then across the street is the second building. And this is where reception is and where they have a breakfast. I really like this. They have some benches and chairs just out here on the street. I've noticed a lot of the guests sitting here and having a drink during the afternoon yesterday. But here I am enjoying the bench outside of the little Yangon hostel early in the morning, so it's nice and cool. The street is really quiet. Oh, it's amazing just to uh, sit here and take in the atmosphere. pointed out these buildings yesterday, old traditional homes with the big archways over the windows and then balconies down here. So quiet. It's almost eerie how quiet it is here. I'm just not used to that. Yesterday there were a lot of generator sounds as I was walking around, but there are no generators operating in this alley, at least not right now. I really enjoyed that breakfast. Maybe I should have breakfast more often. I feel really good. <laughs> I smelled coffee and I saw two people drinking coffee, but I didn't see anywhere where they got that from. So maybe coffee isn't included as part of the breakfast. But it's amazing that there's a breakfast at all. I'm just not used to that. Just to walk into that nice lobby area and have some rice and toast, buttered toast with jam fresh watermelon, tomato and cucumber, and orange juice. That's amazing. Another funny thing about that breakfast is that there were three, four, maybe five other foreigners there. And I was kind of eager to chat with them, but it was almost impossible to do that because all five of them were focused on their phones. They're either chatting, you know, through Facebook Messenger or something like that, or they're surfing the news. They're doing something on their phone. One or two were actually Skyping or uh, doing a video chat with family and friends in their home country. So how do you break into that? I want to sort of throw out an icebreaker and start a conversation, but now I'm interrupting whatever conversation they're having with this other person on the other end of their phone. So I ended up having my breakfast in complete silence and isolation. 
In the old days, I guess, people would might be reading a book and you wouldn't want to interrupt them because they're reading. But even that was easier to kind of break into. People always ask you, oh, what are you reading? You know? And then you tell them what you're reading and then you have a conversation. But with the phones, it seems more of an interruption. So you're reluctant to do that. Time for a life update, or more like a hostel update. When I arrived at the little Yangon hostel on my first day, I had reserved a single room in advance. But through the you know confusion of online bookings and the way things happen today, they didn't have a single room available, so they gave me that double room for one night at the same price as a single room and said that I could move into a single room today when one would be available. Secretly, I was hoping that they would just let me stay in that double room the entire time and charge me the single room rate, but I uh, confirmed with them this morning that they were going to move me. But that was at about, I don't know, 9.30 or so that I checked with them and they said yes, but we can't really move you to the new room until noon because that's the checkout time and the person has to check out of the single room and then we have to clean it so, you know, noon you'll move to the new room. So I was kind of trapped in my double room a little bit, but that was okay, you know, I just settled in with my air conditioning and made a cup of coffee and kept uh, fiddling on the computer, doing different things, and I just hung out for the morning until noon, and uh, I didn't really hear from anybody, and I wasn't quite sure what to do, but I figured I better go check on this, because you can easily get lost in these situations. A great thing about these hostels is that they're very informal, low-key, and that works out really well sometimes, but it can also go against you. So I can just imagine myself taking it easy, relaxing in my room, waiting for them, and then finding out that somebody booked my double room and the single room, and now I have no rooms at all. And then again, there's nothing you can do about it. They will just sort of smile at you and say, mm -hmm. sorry, but you have to find another place to stay. <laughs> I didn't want that to happen, so at noon, maybe quarter after 12, I went down to the desk again, a little bit sheepish, a little bit, you know, hesitant. I don't want to appear like I'm hassling them or anything, but, you know, I want to get this settled. I want a room so that I can go out exploring uh, Yangon. And they looked at me and they had no idea what I was talking about, the guy at the front desk. He's just like, what, what do you want? And says, well, Remember me, I'm in the double room, you're going to give me a single room, all that stuff, you know, my face doesn't ring a bell. It was the same guy the whole time. Anyway, he finally remembered what was going on and he says, oh, okay, the room will be ready in 15 minutes. Just go back up to your room and wait and I will come get you in 15 minutes. Of course, that was three hours ago. <laughs> so I was still, I was just waiting and waiting and waiting and uh, had another cup of coffee, kept working on my computer, and I figured, well, it's really hot out today, midday, so just relax and um, just enjoy this double room while you have it. And when you get the single room, you move, and we'll just call this a uh, casual day of not doing very much. A bunch more time goes by, and at this point, I don't want to go hassle them again, so I just stayed in the room and stayed and stayed. Meanwhile, the power goes out here all the time. Like, sometimes as frequently as 15 minutes, the power just disappears. And that's a problem for me because I kept my old laptop. I spent so much money on new cameras that I didn't really want to buy a new laptop. And the battery on my old one is dead. So every time the power went out, my computer shut down instantly and I would lose all the work that I was doing. So that was not a great thing either. It was a little bit frustrating. <laughs> but finally, there came a knock on my door. And after, well, literally six or seven hours of just waiting for them to do something, once I opened the door to the knock, four guys came in like an invading army. It was like, all right, new room is ready. Let's go, out. 
and they march in and they start moving all my stuff around they're stripping the bed they're doing all kinds of things and I'm just standing there in a pair of shorts and uh, I luckily I had packed up everything long ago but I still wanted to sort of check the room to make sure I didn't forget anything put on a pair of pants and all that kind of stuff but there was no way to do that with this invading army you know clearing out the room while I'm standing there you know kind of flustered now suddenly I'm in a huge rush to sudden to pack up within two seconds and get out of that room after waiting for seven hours but that that's how things work at these uh, types of hostels so we go across to the new building where they have a single room for me. Two things about this single room. The first one was that there was no lock for the door. Like the door just kind of slid back and forth. It's a, here I'll show it to you. There it is there. It's just a sliding door. And the guy kind of let me settle in, put my bag inside, and then he looked at me like, okay, are we good? And I hesitantly said, well, is there a key for this room? Like, where's the key? And he said confidently and with a smile, no key, it's lost. So they wanted me to move into this single room and I couldn't lock the door. And I wasn't sure how to respond to that. I mean, my sarcastic voice wanted to come out and say, okay, so if I stay with this room where I can't lock the door, if my computer and two cameras and passport and money is all stolen, you're going to reimburse me for all of that. So whatever is stolen from this room because I can't lock it, you're going to buy me a replacement? Is that how that's gonna work? Of course, I did not go the sarcastic route. I just said politely that I can't stay in a room without a lockable door, I just can't. There has to be some way to lock this door or I, I just can't stay here. I really, I can't do it. Not really the, it's not just having something stolen, but the worry about it. How can you just leave all your stuff here and go out into Myanmar and spend the whole day exploring because you'll be worried about it the whole time, right? You won't be able to relax. So I kind of stuck to my guns here. He suggested that every time I go out, I can just bring my bags to the front desk and leave everything there. He thought that was a reasonable solution. <laughs> Obviously it wasn't because I can't pack up everything and bring it to the desk across the street. Every time I want to go out to grab a meal or, or, or do anything, uh, that's ridiculous. He thought it was reasonable, but for me it was ridiculous. So I still uh, stuck to my guns and said, uh, listen, I, I can't stay here without a lock of some kind. And then he got on his walkie-talkie. They all have uh, radios here, which is a very professional and cool feature. And out of nowhere, suddenly a key was produced. They found it. The key was lost, but now the key was found. So I have my uh, key to room one. So that was issue one with the room. Issue number two is really quite funny. You'll see that I'm standing on the bed. Look, you can look down at my feet. And the reason I'm standing on the bed is because there is practically no room to stand. It's so tiny. The single room is not half the size of a double room. It's maybe 20% of the size of my old room. Here, take a look around. So there's the space on one side of the bed, just wide enough for my pack. And here's the uh, space on the other side with the door, and it's just wide enough for my uh, duffel bag. And I've got a nice little table there beside the bed, which is handy. And uh, there's the true item that is much more important to me than how big or small the room is. The air conditioner, it works fine, so that's great. And uh, yeah, here's my new little single room paradise. So this guy apparently doesn't work, but well, that doesn't matter. I don't think I would have any use for that. No hooks anywhere, so it doesn't pass the Doug test. 
but we do have a uh, towel rack, which is nice. And I checked out the shared bathrooms here, and they're really nice, and there's a ton of them down at the end of the hall. So, overall, ah, small room doesn't matter to me. I'm a pretty organized person. I can live in a small space. I'm usually much happier in a small space than uh, in a big one. And um, I'm on the first floor right beside the balcony. So let's go outside and uh, take a look at the world from the balcony of my new building. This is the sliding door to my room. Get a, uh, a look at it from the outside. So this is what I first saw when they opened the door. Maybe it looks bigger than it is on this wide angle lens, but trust me, it's uh, tiny. <laughs> So we slide the door, closed. This is the hallway, which is really nice. Um, yeah, freshly painted, nice lights. They've got some uh, colorful artwork covering the whole wall. That's really nice. Yeah, very cheerful, I like that. These are the uh, shared bathrooms. They all look roughly the same. Yeah, nice uh, shower head, soap is supplied, and it looks like they've got well, at least four of them here. Four sinks, oh, six sinks. And I'm not sure what those are. Maybe those are also uh, bathrooms. And there are Two rooms here, another room here, I guess. So the location of my room, you can't complain about that. Um, I'd much rather have this room than the ones in that tiny space uh, by the bathroom. Oh, let's take a look at the stairwell. That's really quite cool. So this is the stairwell for coming up to the second floor. As you can see, it's all wooden steps, wooden walls even a nice old wooden banister. We got some nice uh, artwork there as well. Continuing the same up there. I'll probably go upstairs in a second. But yeah, all wooden walls, banister and stairs all the way up. It's beautiful. Let's take a look at the balcony. <laughs> That's great. Look at that. It doesn't get any better than that. I could settle in and uh, live here, no trouble at all. Oh, it looks like these rooms here have uh, doors opening right onto the balcony, which is nice. I've seen a few foreigners uh, here, like sitting out on the benches outside, and they just have that look about them, like they're long-termers been on the road for decades, maybe their entire life, and they could easily be living here long term. And I suspect that the, you know, the best rooms or the most, the rooms that are most livable, you know, with doors that go to the outside world and windows and things like that, they tend to be occupied by foreigners who are long term, because the longer you stay here, you can upgrade your room when the next, when the better room becomes available, you're here to move in, you know. So I imagine these rooms are occupied by long-term foreigners here. Yeah, it's the middle of the afternoon now, and this alleyway is still really, really quiet. Time to explore the second floor, and then maybe the uh, main floor down on the bottom. Let's go upstairs. Hey. love these steps and they don't even creak wooden steps that uh, don't creak they've got their own balcony up here i saw inside one of the doors to these rooms and it looks like they're not single private rooms, they're actually large dormitories. So 
so I was wrong about long-term foreigners staying there. It looked like a lot of uh, local guys staying in there. Pretty much the same view from down below. I guess there's my, uh, my balcony down there. There's my shadow. I think they named all the rooms after uh, districts in uh, Myanmar. Chindwin. Some nice puppets on the wall here. This is a small thing, but it's something I really notice when you get, you know, like plastic or paper flowers like this. Almost anywhere in the world, they get put up and forgotten. And you'll find when you look at them, they're just covered in cobwebs and dust. And yet when you look at these ones, yeah, no, uh, no cobwebs at all. That's a good sign, you know, that they keep it nice and clean here. mystery stairs. Oh, gotta love these. You can't have stairs and not expect me to climb them. Let's go see what's up here. I assume it's a laundry floor and you can hang up or they hang laundry to dry up here. Huh. No, it's largely a um, giant water tank center for them up here. My goodness, look at the size of these things. I hope that's a strong floor they're sitting on. That is a lot of weight. Yeah, it looks like this is where you come to get buff, to get swole. Got all your weights and a punching bag. And there's me, the new and improved Doug with all of my uh, push-ups and sit-ups. But I look largely the same, except for Shorter hair, okay, and uh, shorts. And what's the view like from up here? Ah, looking into a mysterious back alley. Yeah, not the, yeah, it's definitely, uh, that's an alley. Looks like a lot of stuff gets tossed out the window. <laughs> A lot of garbage down there. And since nobody really owns it or cares about it, the garbage just stays. I ah, wonder what's hanging from there. Look at that massive steel beam coming out of that building. There's only one of them there, so it's not part of the roof structure. There must be something in there that it's used to support. Maybe this was a factory of some kind long ago. This is the free gift that came with my uh, GoPro. It's a, it has like a rubber case with a lanyard attached. And I love lanyards. As I explained in a recent uh, travel tip, I find that if I put a lanyard on something, I never misplace it and I never lose it. And one thing I've learned about this uh, GoPro is that it's so small and light without the rubber case. I was carrying it like in my pocket and it was so small, I didn't even feel it in my pocket. And I would put it down places when I was like putting on my sandals or something. And then I would forget about it or nearly forget about it. It's just so small, you could lose it like that. And so it's good that it's small, easy to carry around, but I think you could also lose it quite easily. And I think this uh, lanyard will help prevent that. So I decided to put the rubber case on it. I was worried that the rubber would cover the microphone too much. Um, but it, the sound is not that great and well, from what I've heard so far, even with the rubber case, it doesn't affect the sound that much. It's largely the same. So I think I'm going to keep this rubber uh, case on it. The only problem with it, it's the same as the frame, that with the rubber case around it or even the frame around it, you have to take it out of the case, out of the rubber case in order to change the battery, plug in a, a USB cord or change the SD card. To do anything, basically, you have to take it out of this rubber case. And it's pretty hard to get in and out of this thing. So it's not uh, not the greatest design in the world from that point of view. Anyway, that is the top floor 
following the secret stairs. Now I'm going to go down to the main floor and see if there's anything interesting down there. The place is smaller than I expected. I thought there'd be more single rooms, but there don't seem to be that many of them. So let's go all the way down to the bottom. You've got to be careful going down stairs like this. They are steep and small. One slip, and you're in the hospital, I think. This is the main floor of this other building. By the number of shoes, looks like there's a lot of people staying here. Got a whole wall of shoes here, a whole bunch of them over there. And there's quite a few more rooms down here. The Shui Li room. Oh, dormitory. What's this one called? The Mietmaka. And ah, a whole bunch more uh, bathrooms down on this floor. The repair, the repair crew hard at work fixing something or installing something new. This is the building that has the uh, the benches, the benches that I mentioned. There they are. There. Oh. I was just chatting with the the manager here of the uh, little Yangon hostel, and I learned something quite interesting, which kind of blows my mind. That now it makes more sense that I had to wait so long for that single room. In this hostel, they have one single room, and that's it. Just that one room. He says that they just happened to have this little space left over when they renovated and they didn't know what to do with that tiny space. And they thought, well, let's just turn it into a single room for Doug. He's going to come here one day and he'll want a single room. So they built it just, uh, just for me. Most of the rooms are large dormitories and I'm inside one of them now. And I just wanted to show you what it looked like. It's really amazing. So like some of the nicest uh, dormitory accommodation I've seen. Here's one side of it. And it has four quite large beds. Look very comfortable. And each bed has a curtain, privacy curtain, like that, that you can pull across, which is very nice. And assuming it works, it's kind of nice to have a little uh, light in there. Oh, look at that. A hook on the wall. Doug, uh, Doug approved. It's all wooden, which is really nice. So this would be nice and solid. So if the person above or below you is moving around, it's not going to shake your bed. And that's one of the biggest problems in uh, dormitory life. And down below, They've got some uh, cupboards that you can unlock with your own padlock, which is a really nice touch. And that's just one side of the room. And the other side is a mirror image with uh, four more beds just like that. And the two doors that I saw that I thought were leading to two single rooms are in fact leading to the same, uh, same room. So there's one door here and another door there. Nice air conditioner. It's very cool in here and they're running it even though there's nobody staying here. I'm guessing that electricity is not that expensive in Myanmar because they don't seem to be worrying about it that much, like running an air con even though there's nobody staying here. This room is reserved, but the people aren't showing up until tonight. 
and they're running the air conditioner. And when the manager left the room, he left the door wide open, which maybe it's my background, a bit of a budget background. Um, even when growing up, you know, if the air conditioner is running, you better close the window and close the doors or your father's going to come yell at you, you know, and you don't open the refrigerator door and leave it open while you stare at the inside. You open it, get your food and then close it right away. You know, that's the uh, economical lifestyle. But here, uh, yeah, not that worried about it. Another great thing about this uh, place for me, at least in the double room, was how many electrical outlets there were. There had to be six of them in that double room. And here, it looks like every bunk bed has at least two that I can see. Yeah, two outlets and a hook for each one. No, I like this uh, a lot. I've stayed in, I, I don't often stay in dormitories. I find them uncomfortable. And when I have stayed in them, I stayed in one in Singapore, for example, because Singapore was quite an expensive place. And it was just a horrible dormitory, worse than prison, really that uncomfortable. So there it is. This is the uh, dormitory at Little Yangon Hostel. Nice. Tour is finished. I've seen everything there is to see in this hostel, I think. And uh, now it's time to settle into my room. I have to unpack and I have to be super dug about it because I have to be very organized to get all of my gear into this small space and keep it tidy and, and livable. Um, if you're not careful, I think in this small room, your gear can explode and just take over. So time to unpack and uh, plug in all my electronics. That's the first step all the time. Mm -hmm.